So, Ron, thank you for joining me on the Question Guy podcast. I appreciate your time so much. And um, there's a lot of things I want to ask you, and I know these are just general conversations that I have with people, but when I when I have somebody who is just full of energy, that kind of wears on me. It, it kind of gets me excited. And you are somebody who is just full of energy. I've seen your your YouTube videos. So I've not I've never really seen you like in live in person on stage, but I've seen your stuff. And the first thing I gotta say is I got three questions to start the interview, if that's okay. Go for it. All right, three questions. One. Three, three questions. The first one is where do you get your costumes? <laughs> Amazon. Do you really? <laughs> A lot of like just costumes. awesome. It, you know what it is? It's just it, it's it's being creative, and you know I, when when I uh, got my first costume idea, I was already doing yogarati in schools, and then I wanted to start teaching it in uh, conferences and workshops, and I figured you know I'm all into animation and martial arts and yoga and all that stuff, and I've been watching cartoons as a little kid, so why not get the opportunity to, you know, get dressed up? And uh, I found uh, these yoga pants that are on Amazon that are all different colors. You are kidding. It. You got it on they're Amazon. Super, they're, they're super, they're super, co- it, it, everything is on Amazon. <laughs> uh, it, it, Amazon via China. Um, and uh, then I found some old um, uh, karate tops and uh, cut the sleeves off and then eventually found out that you can just get them purchased like that i found the the wigs and i just i, don't okay, know, I was I, gonna I just, go to the wig second <laughs> yeah oh okay yeah, yeah. And I, I love it i mean i've always i love the movie the matrix i think it's a documentary um I've, I've been like just listening to it and doing seminars that are aligned with it so any opportunity that i had i'm like oh you know what i want to get dressed up in a matrix costume and do a workshop and now i do it so it's it, it just whatever i want to do I try my best not to get in my own way. Okay. Because yeah. your persona on stage is our characters. Maybe they're extensions of you, but they're definitely characters. And I saw the one where you did what dress up as, as, as the one as Neo with the black jacket. I mean, you, yeah. you, you, you did there. it. Yeah, it was out there. It was great. Yeah. So what's, what, what was that all about? <laughs> Um, my, my focus is teaching and educating people to have an understanding that maybe the matrix is not so much a, uh, just a fun sci-fi action movie, but a more on a, uh, um, a metaphor for our life. And we are programmed a certain way. This is a computer, just like, uh, you know, we have computers in our phones and our, 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 um, you know, anything that has an operating system. And we have these automatic stuck programs. Like uh, I start the matrix training with uh, a couple of questions. You said three questions. I have three questions. So ready? If I say up, you say. Uh, How high? Okay. So now, so right off the bat. Because I was thinking, usually say, if I say jump, people say how high, right? Right. But so if I said up, you would say down right but be, be, what was interesting was most people if i say up they say down if i say left then they say right are they trying to be yeah, antagonistic it, well th- that's what usually people are like i okay. say stop they say go but what was interesting was i guess um did you hear the word jump or did you hear the word up i heard the word up but i was kind of and the, translating then, that in my head so you see how your brain is free to just go off and actually, okay, what does it mean by up? As, so you are freed of your automatic oppositional constraint. Even the second time when I asked you, when I say left, you say, you know, there was a hiccup. So that's great because that shows that you're not what, what sometimes like the movie with Ryan Reynolds, uh, Free Guy refers to people in life as NPCs. They're just characters. They go on through life, but they don't really operate outside of it. Like there's NPCs that I meet. I'll give you a perfect example. Like I I love these black cherry wings that they have down here. I like to get them um, battered and, and fried and crunchy, but they're right now they're grilled. Okay. So I said, can you take it? And can you just make me black cherry wings 
with the breaded ones. And they're like, you can't do that. It doesn't come like that. I'm like, you can't, what do you do? They're like, well, we grill the wings and then we put the black cherry sauce. I'm like, you can't take the, 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 the wings and then put the black cherry sauce on it. The fry was like, we can't do that. I'm like, can you give me the sauce and I can do it? And they said, yes. And I'm sitting there just like, but, but that's, that's, I, I totally it. understand. <laughs> you get, you get it. So the people that say up, they say down left, right, oppositional, you know, that's just, they're stuck in NPC. They don't even realize it and there's nothing wrong with it. But if it's someone like you who understands it and might awaken, if somebody goes, okay, wait a minute, I'm stuck in a program. And I, when I do a lot of my trainings, I give so many examples, like how many times have people just driven down a highway, all of a sudden they zone out and 10 minutes go by and they're five exits down and you're like, why did I get what? Yeah. Like I like what? Like I had autopilot before Tesla, but I'm sitting there like, how am I not dead right now? But your brain just goes like yeah. 85, 90% of our day, our brain runs an automatic preconditioned pattern. Nothing wrong with that. You know, it's like, you know, what left, right, left, right. You know how to walk. So um, all these different ways that people see that they're stuck the matrix keynote is there to have them realize how they're all oppositional, how um, one of the things I talk about is expectations. You know, it's like, you know, we as human beings create expectations for other people, usually don't share the expectation. And when they don't fulfill the expectation that they know nothing about, because we didn't tell them, we're programmed to get mad at them, which is insanity. It doesn't make sense. So having people realize as I'm wrapping up the matrix, because I do want you to ask me. Yeah, we're going to get there. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because that's I, another you persona. High, you said high energy. But the whole point is that, you know, if I can, in an entertaining way, get people to actually sit back and go, wow, like most of my day is really stuck automatic. I, I don't really have any more moments. I ha I've had bad days, bad months, like bad three years, and they're just running automatic. If I can get them for one moment to go, I'm going to take a different route today, driving home. I'm not going to do this. You know what? I'm going to go and do this that I don't usually do and go to the gym at night when I only go during the day. And then they break a pattern. And then literally it's like, if you're, I mean, you know, I see the stuff behind you. Uh, I'm assuming that you're a Marvel fan and multiverse and timelines and all that stuff. So literally like if you make a choice to do a little hop, skip or a jump, you're switching timelines and your whole life becomes different. Just like, you know, Marty McFly, not Marty, but his dad, the second he hit Biff, then he goes back into the future, into the future. He's different. Back in time, and then yeah. life is totally different because of one event. So I right. like to be the, I like when I do the matrix one, I like to be the catalyst or at least just one little, even though it's more dressed like, like, uh, like Neo, I really, really prefer to be Morpheus. I just don't look that good. And, and I don't think the suit would come off. And it was really hard to find it big enough because, I mean, that thing is like 4XL. And, and it's 4XL. And it, it's so hot in that suit. I'm but sorry. anyway, it's worth But it. it was great, though. The video is great. Thank you. I used to be a pro wrestler. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, what, what, what? <laughs> oh. You were a pro wrestler. A pro yeah, yeah, right out of high school. I, I, I hated college. And uh, I went to go to different pro wrestling schools just so I can uh, kind of do my acting and my performing. I needed to be seen just like I needed to be seen when I was four or five years old. Um, so I, I, we wrestled as the, uh, we did a Blues Brothers routine. So I was the John Belushi, my partner, who I'm six foot, 320 pounds. He's six foot two, about a good 270, a big guy, but we would come, he would do the Dan Aykroyd. We would come out singing and dancing and, and he would do the, you know, doing this while uh, running around me in the ring while I'm doing the John Belushi dance that he does in the church, uh, you know, when everything's singing and laughing. And then I do a cartwheel into a full split, place erupts. It's all downhill from there because we really weren't that good wrestlers. We didn't do the high flying stuff, but we, we did more comedy. But the point of the story is while everybody was dressed in skivvies because we weren't committed to working out, we were more committed to, you know, uh, working French fries. Um, we ended up, you know, we figured out the perfect thing while they're wrestling in skivvies. We are in shirts, pants, suit, hat, let these leather hats that eventually got so disgusting and sweaty that we had to pull them on our heads to keep them on, but then they would get stuck 
to the point that everybody was an ongoing gimmick. How the hell do you keep your hats on in the ring? They never come off. Every single time we wrestle, we're talking years in, we would have this like red wine as it digs into our head and we never, we always wore the same hats for like 10 years. It was disgusting. So, so I, you've I, I was, always I been dressing up. I mean, that, I've always I, been dressing up and I've always been comfortable just sweating my butt off and just having fun and doing whatever you need to do. Just like when I see stand up comics up there and the lights are on and the, and the sweat's dripping off their face. I'm like, that's, that's my world. But just, just focusing on early childhood, given early childhood community, uh, the fun and joy that they need because it's early childhood and they need to be having the most fun and the most joy. And, and, and if I can inspire someone to go on Amazon, spend 10 bucks and one day walk into their preschool classroom and, you know, are you going to put it on? All of a sudden, they walk into their classroom, Put it on. <laughs> and and now and now it looks different. The the day is completely different. So you know, it's like even if they do it for a little bit, it's so so. I if you know, teachers they, they put they it back on. Play. What you want to put, it, put, it, back put on? it back on? All right, fine. That was awesome. I feel like I should. Because should that, that was my that. second question. Where do you get the hair? Amazon. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Amazon's amazing. You can literally get anything. You can accept an Amazon. Okay. You can't actually get an you Amazon. Can't get Amazon, Amazon. Amazon. I but, tried. I tried. So, I married. so, so yeah, I know where now you get your costumes and you get your wigs. Where do you get your energy? Because you're always full of energy. Even now, you're full of energy. And how, um, where do you get your energy from? Because, and working with well, kids, you got to have it. Well, I, I channel my energy from two places. I mean, I don't know how, how hooey you want to get in a conversation, but I channel my energy from two places, from the sun and from the planet. I mean, it's a, I, I feel I've been a Reiki energy practitioner for over 15 years. Um, I do a lot of work in meditation. I'm very, um, I feel energy. I feel like I, we can do something if you want about uh, creating energy with our hands where you, you may actually feel like a vibration pushing power uh, beam between your hands back and forth. But um, I channel energy from the sun. I mean, uh, people, we were brought up to be scared, stay out of the sun. It's going to give you cancer, give you this and give you that. I mean, I moved down to South Florida. I rarely use sunblock. I just make sure that I have a base tan and I'm not out there for five hours and I have an umbrella, whatever. And I absorb the sun and then I just can lay down like most people that when they go to the beach, um, they'll lay on a towel and I basically, I put a towel down just for after. Maybe I want to lay my head on the towel because I have my earbuds in and then the rest of my body, I just lay in the sand. I turn my palms down and I feel from the ground, whoa, 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 just like that. And it, it's a limitless source of energy. It's the same energy that some of these kids have. It's the, 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 I don't know what people back in the day, they would diagnose it. They had to say, oh, D, uh, you know, ADHD, hyper, whatever. It's, it's just, there's, I, I believe through my understanding that there's two types of people. Like, you know, um, do you have anybody in your life that was ever diagnosed ADD, ODD, DOGG, anything like that? Um, not through my genealogy, no, not, not my family. I mean, I, I used to work as a mental health professional back in the day, so right. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but so, you know, the high energy kid, this and that. So what do they do? What do they try to do to me um, that my mom said, absolutely not, you're not going to draw up my kid, but they wanted to give me Ritalin. And then later on, as I'm actually an educator and understand, like, wait a minute, Ritalin, Adderall, these are stimulants. And when you give the stimulant to this child, they calm down and focus. But if you gave it to a quote unquote, let me fix my hair, quote unquote, normal child, then they would go through the roof. So for me, it's just, there's two types of people. And there's not that one is this, one is that. There's just people and adults and kids that just, they can't focus. They're not going to maintain a nine to five job in a cubicle. I mean, we were just watching this show called Corporate on Comedy Central that completely makes fun of the whole corporate world. I've never been in it. And my love and I are watching and she's cringing because there's an entire episode on just how to use the exclamation points when you're talking. Because <laughs> now when you're emailing, you can't say, hey, Bob, period. How's everything going? But you have to go exclamation or they feel like it's something wrong. It's you know, like programming, whatever. 
Yeah. But it, it, yeah. So so basically, it's uh, the the uh, if if I want to calm down, which you see how the more we're talking, the more we're riled up. And what is it? Six forty five at night right now. We're doing it. Is like, that okay with you? Out. Because I'm good with this. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. But uh, this is this is how I roll. The more I do, the more energy I get. Okay. And I want to jump into your screen to go play with the toys you have behind you. I only have, what do I have? I got some of my old school Transformers that I like. And, uh, oh, you know what's really cool? This is an Iron Man head. <gasps> wow. Made out of organite, which is some sort of stone that apparently when you put these things by your phone or by certain things, it reduces the some sort of EM not an EMF, uh, but some sort of uh, charge that comes off it. So um, pretty cool huh. stuff. Huh? Did you, so anyway, was that I a gift? To, How did you get that? Um, I got it because I ordered some other crystals and things like that from this one guy, uh, team, teamlight.com. Uh, the guy's name is Rion. He's, he's incredible. He's got a lot of cool stuff. He does a lot of work on astrology but he makes all these different things like pyramids and different things made out of organic material and crystal uh, team light. Yeah. I think that that's where stuff is real. And he's based in Sedona where all, a lot of those high energy lines are happening. So that's another okay. thing too. There's all these areas around the planet. Why certain pyramids are there. My understanding to Sarasota, which we're looking to move from the East coast of Florida to the West coast. Uh, that's also an area that has a lot of energy lines going there you know um the whole point of adhd's thing is if i want to calm down like after this conversation i'm going to go make some espresso and a coffee and i'm going to have that as in within 10 15 minutes because you know the initial was just mental 10 15 minutes all of a sudden be like this and i'm be looking at that and i'll be like all right and 8 p.m comes around and i'm going to be watching myself some aw wrestling chill because I'm the other type of person that when you're given a quote, so to us, it's not a stimulant. It's just a calmer. Right. And, I'm, no. and that's good. And that's good. Well, now I know. So I, I'm, I'm just curious. Now I know the question. Yep. Guys got to ask questions. Uh, Killing is half the battle. <laughs> What's your message? What, I mean, what are you trying to tell people through your hair and your energy and your costumes? Because you, you have Yogarati, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Yogarati is big. You talk to kids, you tell them not to be, I guess, placent or just kind of stuck in their own self. Because you talked to me, the first thing you said is you asked me a bunch of questions. And I don't think it's, I don't, I don't belong in a box. I've, I, I've, been on, I've been in a box for, I'm 52, I'm 53 now. I've been in a box for 52 years. I got tired of it. I, I climbed out of the box. What's your message? The brain lies. The heart tells the truth. That's one. It's just, I've really become very clear that whatever designed us and created us and created the brain um, intentionally put blockages in front of us so we can work through it. And I've just seen uh, from myself, others, whatever the brain says, you're not good enough. It compares you to somebody else. You're this, you're too heavy. You should be doing this. You should, it should, 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 blah, blah, blah. Your mother's not, it just, the brain is just there as a commentary. Um, and I've learned recently that it's just literally like the brain can say stuff and you don't even have to, you don't even have to pay attention to it. It can literally go, it's like your mother's, your mother is upset at you right now. And you can literally go, ah! or you can go, Okay, cool. That moved on. Okay, now what's next? And like thoughts just come there. And then if you're able to, if you're able to get yourself to that point where you can just understand, like uh, I, I, I love GI Joe growing up, and there were these guys called the Televipers that they had screens on their head, and whenever they would think something, it would be like danger, and then the word danger would come across their head. It's like I, I don't know to spell it. It was weird, but um, if you if if you understand the brain just lies, um, the heart, if you ask your heart about the judgments that the brain has to you, where you should be, what you should be doing, should I have, been, should I be still listening to my parents and doing this job that I've hated for 20 years because they might be disappointed for, in me for five seconds, or should I quit this job 
and become an entrepreneur and do the thing I'm passionate about and so um, you know, so sweaters while I'm singing on YouTube, like whatever, like, like people have these crazy, insane passions. Like I love watching America's Got Talent. And I tell people, follow your heart and just get that in addition to all the other people that want to keep you down, like, uh, you know, the crab in the bucket principle, you have a bucket of crabs and they're always open. I never used to understand. I go to a farmer's market or a Chinese market with my family. I'm like, how come the they don't have a cover on it. Like, what's going on? How come they're all over the floor? And then I watch it. And as soon as one crab starts making it to the top, instead of the other crabs going, yeah, let's go, Grandma. Let's go. We're out of here, blah, blah. They go, uh-uh. Psh, psh, and they start pulling them down. And I'm like, oh, shit. And that's a lot of people. So including a lot of people and your own brain is doing that already because of inner child trauma stuff that happened to you between ages two to six years old that now, you know, you raise your hand in first grade, to, uh, you get the answer wrong. Back in the day, we were growing up, teachers were allowed to call us stupid and make fun of us and what the hell kind of answer and what's wrong with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you sit there in first grade going, huh, and the kids are looking at you and they're laughing at you. And then your brain creates a snapshot and goes, here's some trauma for you. Your body goes, I don't like this. And now 20, 25 years from now, you can't raise your hand. You won't say anything, blah, blah, blah. You literally don't speak up for yourself because you programmed yourself at six years old. Wow. And your brain starts going, don't say it. Don't say it. You're going to be embarrassing than that. But if you're able to just get that, that brain, oh, here come the words again, blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, cool. Oh, that sucked. Those words really effing hurt. Okay, now what does my heart say? And my heart goes, and, I, and all of a sudden I start thinking from here, and my heart goes, You got this. Like you did it before. You got this. There's nothing wrong. And then all of a sudden you go, and then you take the action to further as opposed to just listening to this brain and then doing what we do as, uh, as uh, adults. We've been taught numbing, drinking, smoking, pills, depression, all that stuff, as opposed to just. Just kidding. You know what? There's a little effing child in here and that kid wants to play and have fun. And, and, and if you let it do its thing, your life is going to be amazing. And that's not, that's for anyone, not just people that work with kids or have kids. Oh yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> how, how many people have you told this message to and how many more people do you want to tell it to? 16,473. Oh, I love that number. <laughs> Where do you get that number I from? I don't know. I just, um, I just, pull, I just pulled it out of my friends called it ether pull. That was it. That was uh, it, it, it. It came in. So this is going to be interesting. So it came in from this side. So it's really just my brain making jokes, but when information comes in from this side, it sounds different. And it's more of that thing. Like, Oh, I wonder what's going on with that school that you spoke to two months ago, blah, blah, blah. You should give them a call and all, or not even, it doesn't even say you should give them a call. Hmm, I wonder what that director's doing. Do, 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 pick up my phone call. Oh my goodness, we're just looking at your materials. Oh, it must be a coincidence. And then they book me. So literally like that, that connective energy, that spiritual um, source of energy in the ether, uh, the quantum field, if, you, if you're a Joe Dispenza guy or, or a Bruce Lipton guy, you know, there's this field of information that exists that if you're open to it and, and, and you listen to it, you can get a lot of Stop. Yeah, and it's it just as simple, like anybody that's watching this, you know, it's like, oh, I wonder how Susie's doing. It's, it's been a long, boom, the phone rings, Susie, because your energy cord is connected to her and you felt her thinking about you or she felt you thinking about her. And then she goes and picked up the phone. And I call this future, it's future science because this stuff right now is people are just like, blah, 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 blah. but you know, if I told you 20 years ago, you'd be holding a computer in your hand that you could hit a button to talk to somebody on the other side of the planet, live streaming impossible and then we can do concerts with this thing with tens of thousands of people watching a concert live on the other side of the planet future science oh i love it so what's next uh tonight i'm going to be watching some pro wrestling <laughs> i know what you're doing tonight you're going to be chilling oh you said coffee. what's next what's that yeah coffee i got a whole different out with some coffee what's next on the that agenda what's What's 22, what's 2022 and 2023 look like for you? Well, starting next week is a two month run all over the, not run, uh, two month uh, stints all over the country. A bunch of them I'm bringing my love with me because she performs and she does 
Uh, she does uh, different workshops inside of the stuff and we're coming up with our own uh, shtick together. Um, I got a buddy in mind who um, I've known for 20 years. He's going to come on the road with me just to hang out. Um, but I have a lot of different, like I'm a next, it just Phoenix next week alone. It's like Phoenix and then, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, and then Salinas, California. And the week after that, it's like Tennessee. And I get to go to summer. I, I actually have a booking three hours away from where they're having the second biggest event of the year wrestling in Tennessee, uh, SummerSlam. So it's kind of like the universe is booking things for me. Cool. It kind of worked out nicely. Um, but uh, my focus uh, over the next year or so, uh, I put out my behavior mastery system uh, on Udemy, and that's gotten a lot of reviews. I have like like 4.6 rating out of five. And uh, the reason why I love my behavior system, there's five parts to it. Part one and two were for the, you know, like we said, the 95% of kids, the ones that, you know, if you gave them a cup of coffee, they'd go to the moon. You know, you tell them to stand up, to sit down, do your homework, apply for college, do this, blah, 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 blah. They do it. Worker bees, NPCs, nothing wrong with it. You know, that's what this world, you know, does need. And then part three, four, and five is for the alpha neurodivergent super genius kid that literally, like me, was sitting in school going, this is stupid. Why do I need this? What am I going to do science? Why am I here? I just want to be a pro wrestler looking at, you know, so it's like a different... I want to perform. Why are you telling me to be quiet? I need to be seen. Like all these different things that the traditional American industrialized school system, it's designed for, but it makes sense. Like if you're in a business, which school is a business, college is a total business, you would not, it wouldn't make sense in a business sense to cater to the 5% of your clientele, which are the alpha neurodivergent uh, Jim Carrey's and Elon Musk's and uh, Richard Bramson's and all these people that they never make it through high school because high school is too slow for them. Um, and, and so they end up doing something amazing. So that's what the behavior mastery program is having people understand that there's a different way to work with these super genius neurodiverse kids by letting them express their passion. Um, just like if someone's on America's Got Talent and it's doing that. So that way parents understand if parents take the system on, they'll let their kids perform more and maybe really get what their kids are really about. Maybe they're designed to art. Maybe they're designed to do singing. Maybe they're designed to create the most amazing spa uh, skateboard in the world. Who the hell knows? Maybe they're not designed to just get a job. So when people see that there's options, then they might be more open to allowing their kids to follow their vision. So um, pushing the Udemy course, that's going to be something that's big. Um, what else are we doing? Anything? I don't know. I'm asking my love. She's just sitting over there working with me. Um, well, that's a lot to begin with. So you don't have to go any further. And there's so much. I have so many conferences that I'm doing. And I'm constantly building relationships with people and helping them out. I'm doing a lot of, uh, I'm mentoring a lot of speakers, which is pretty cool, just because um, not many people have, that I've met speaker wise, have the ability to have a very creative, productive, fun, silly, goofy brain and be able to, okay, now it's time to work on the marketing and what's our analytics and what's our, this, uh, to have a business and a marketing brain. And I, I happen to have both. So I see speakers that they have a passion, they have a vision, what they want to share, but they have no idea about running a speaking business. So then I try to mentor them and help them and coach them. And this is how you get an evaluation form filled out. And this is how you do this and make sure you're taken care of and always get the 50% deposit and blah, blah, blah. So just doing that more and you know i'd like to eventually open up maybe like an early childhood speakers bureau that might cool. be something fun that sounds like a lot of fun well and, I know you're... and one more character that's it too <laughs> i can't tell you yet okay that sounds good i know you're busy but i appreciate your time ron thank you for being a guest on the question guy podcast my pleasure if you can hang on the phone when i disconnect us so that i can have time to debrief yeah okay cool